couple more minutes and we'll get going. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this meeting is now being recorded and it's also being broadcast out on YouTube. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Quentin, I'm not sure who, but could somebody um, text the other commissioners who aren't on yet to um, see if they're oh, having? Yep, we'll send. We'll send. We'll resend messages. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I was about to look to see there's three. There are two or three people with telephone numbers um, out here. I was going to check to see who, if any of these match the um, the missing commissioners. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, I did send a I've sent a text to Commissioner Lane and Commissioner Walsh. So far, I'll send one to Commissioner Tabor as well. Okay, thank you. I know mine had to do a quick update before it would let me in, so they may be running into that. Oh, uh, Commissioner Lane is one of those people dialed in. He says he's in but cannot get audio to work. Um, let me ask him what number he's. Do you see a uh, 8530610 number on there? Or a, a, I believe, well, I believe it's the yeah, it ends in 0610. Pat? I do not. There's a 241, 276, 389, 477, and a 695. <laughs> I'll find out what he's talking about. Yeah, I was, I was looking at what I have as far as what his info is, and I don't see either one of those two numbers in this list. Okay. No, it is nine o'clock, but I'm just going to wait a couple more minutes just to see if somebody's having trouble getting in. Hey, Quentin, can we have the region shut their views down if they have nobody in there and just take up space? We'll chase that, Director, you bet. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Okay. I stopped the video for all of them. Thank you. <clears throat> so Quentin, could you just have somebody give uh, maybe Commissioner Lane a call to see if they can walk him through what he's having trouble with? Bet. Bet. I will call him right now. Thank you. Also try another commissioner's chair. Okay, thank you. I will try Commissioner Walsh. Chair Robinson, I just tried to see if I could put up the flag and it says that I'm not able to. Okay. <laughs> so if there's someone else, perhaps Pat will need to do it. Okay. Mike, can you try it? It says host disabled participant screen sharing. Yeah, I'll Becky, give it a whirl. Becky, can you send it to Mike and I both, please? Whatever you've got. Sure. 
Um, Commissioner Walsh should be promoted into the panelists in a minute. I'm on the phone with uh, Commissioner Lane right now. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Walsh is trying to get in right now. He's having some difficulty. Yeah. Okay, he's on, I see. Okay, so Commissioner Tabor and Commissioner Lane is a, uh, I guess we're just waiting on those. Just for, I'll just wait just to see what's going on. Chair Robinson, are you able to hear me? Yes, I am. Oh, good. Thank you. Yep. Pat, do you know Commissioner Lane if he's going to be able to get on? As it stands right now, I see him. I am just, he put in his name as uh, Lane, and okay. I'm going to make him a panelist. Perfect. Thank you. Then I think we'll go ahead and get started. Commissioner Tabor, hopefully, is getting on. Okay. Commissioner Lane, do you want to unmute just to make sure we can hear you? All right, thanks. Pat, can you enable can you enable screen sharing, please? Perfect. Thank you. All right. Sorry um, about that. Can you see we, that, Chair? Yes. Wait a minute. What are we? Oh no, we cannot. Yes. Perfect. Okay, I am going to call this meeting to order. If everyone could stand and we will recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Okay. All right. Um, Clinton, I will turn that the meeting over to you to give us a presentation on our first two items on the agenda, please. Thank you, Chair Robinson, other members of the Commission and Director Ward. Again, for the record, my name is Tom Kujo, a fortunate to be Chief of Staff for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. I'll briefly summarize the first two topics on the agenda, the two Madison arm rules, Chair Robinson, and then we'll look for questions to further inform the discussion from the Commission questions from the commission, and then also be advised that in addition to the director, chief legal Becky Doctor and uh, legal assistant Jess Snyder is on the line as well for detailed questions. Uh, the topic, the first, the, we, we separated the two rules of the two Madison rules on the agenda, just to make sure that people recognize that there were in fact two rules uh, in the conversation today. The first, 12.11.6702, uh, the, the, the table, the action item is to repeal or to amend that arm rule. We have gone through the hearing process and have collected public comment on uh, this proposal. And those comments have been forwarded to the commission and that comment period is, has been closed. Um, and uh, so, so the bulk, so a considerable amount of public comment opportunity and considerable amount of public comment has been received on this proposal, Chair Robinson. Um, uh, and, and it still has a final today, and it's final not for a hunting season or a fishing season, but for an arm rule. It does warrant uh, uh, public comment opportunity from the podium today, Chair Robinson. If this rule, if nothing is acted upon uh, in this regard, the rule as written would go into effect January 1, 2022. The second rule, Chair Robinson, 12.11.6706, is to repeal the rest rotation sections of the Madison River. It's, it, this rule came to be in the same um, in the same action from the previous commission as the first rule I discussed, the walk wade. Uh, same thing uh, went through a public uh, arm rule process with hearing 
Uh, comment period is closed, significant public engagement, significant public comment. Those comments have been forwarded to the commission. As with the first rule, given that it is a final, uh, not a season regulation, but an arm rule does merit public comment opportunity from the podium here today. Again, for both rules, significant opportunity has been provided to the public uh, and they have picked up that comment, that uh, they have picked up that opportunity uh, in vigor uh, through, the, through the formal arm rule process. Uh, there are the the walk the rest rotation is fairly straightforward that that the action on the item on the table today is leave as is or repeal if you leave as is it goes into effect with the defined walk, rest rotation section is january 1 if you repeal uh, um, it, everything goes away and there is no rest rotation section on the madison uh, to make that same comparison to bounce back to walk rate walk walk wait i'm sorry chair robinson there are three options if you if repeal, uh, if the if the commission decides to do nothing but repeal the existing arm 1211-6702, then nothing would happen. There would be no walk wage sections on the river. Uh, the commission could amend and return to the walk wage sections that are currently in the regulation, the walk wage sections that have been there for a long time. If the commission chose to do nothing, the bill, the the rule 1211-672 as written with those adjusted, with those walkway sections different than from what are currently in the regulation would go into effect January 1, 2022. Chair Robin, with that brief, uh, that brief, perhaps too brief, but uh, overview will stand for any questions. Again, legal staff are available as well, Chair Robinson. So I guess I just want, uh, could you read the portion of the arm that it states that um, it will go into effect unless uh, unless we have a recommendation from the committee that we put together. Becky and Jess, while I look to pull that up, I would ask for you to look as well, see if we can race to get to what we're looking for there. I would um, I would want to be clear uh, about Correct. what. The current arm rule is right. Yes. So what would go into effect on January 1, 2022, if nothing was adopted here? Is that what you're asking for? No, I'm asking the, the language in it um, where it says that in, it will go into effect unless the working group that we formed recommends that it does not. So, and I, I'm just paraphrasing. I just would like the correct language of what the current arm rule says. Right, I see. Let me just make sure that we have that here. Okay, Jessica, do you have that available? It would be, I think it's in motion uh, for option number two yes um to make sure i understand are you able to hear me yes okay good sorry i just unplugged my headphones so the the current language of 12 11 67 06 which is the rest rotation specifically states arm 12 11 6706 will be implemented as a trial program january 1 2022, unless adjusted by the work group as prescribed in arm 12, 11, 67, 10. And okay. that is, um, that language is mirrored in the walkway section administrative rule also. Okay, thank you. Did that That's answer your question? That's what I was looking for, thank you. Thank you, are there any other questions or comments from the commission or Quentin or legal staff? Oh, go ahead, uh, Commissioner Walsh. Chair Robinson, a number of the um, public comments that we received were uh, expressed concerns about the timing of this meeting um, being called right after the holidays and being held uh, prior to our February 4th meeting. And I, I just thought it'd be helpful to review the timing of the, uh, how we got here. And that is in um, the Madison River Work Group very clearly has the charge of reviewing 
uh, these specific rules. It was called out in ARM 1211-6710, and we discussed it during two meetings and voted on it in our meeting on September 22nd. And subsequent to that meeting, I brought it to the commission in our meeting in October, which was open to the public and um, and the agenda for both the Madison River Work Group on uh, September 22nd and for our October commission meeting were made public. And uh, our meetings have all been open to the public and the, uh, in the meeting, obviously uh, the October meeting of the commission was open to the public. At that meeting in October, and also at our meeting of the Madison River Work Group, we, we discussed specific timing of, of this meeting and the need to uh, act uh, prior to the printing deadline of the fishing regulation book for 2022. And that, just so anyone who's listening or was concerned about the timing of this meeting understands that the, uh, the objective has been to not have to reprint or send out corrections to the fishing regulation book. So since really mid-September, uh, the Madison River Work Group and the commission have been working toward a decision date uh, prior to January 1. Okay, are there any other comments or questions from the commission? Commissioner, okay, I'm sure. Yep, go ahead. Uh, I was hoping maybe, uh, I don't know if it'd be better for Eric or uh, Quentin to review the process that led up to the rule being put into place, uh, just in terms of the uh, different work groups and the proposals that went into place and the surveys that were conducted going into the rulemaking process. Chair Robinson, Commissioner Byerth, I'll take a first stab and uh, would look for legal to fill in any process gaps or Eric, if that works. Okay, go ahead, please. Yeah, and, and I'll start quickly uh, uh, some ways through the process. Madison has been in front of the, pre was in front of the previous commission uh, for several, several, several meetings across a couple of years at least. Uh, I'll start, I'll step into that process in this answer to Commissioner Byer's question with uh, two petitions that the department received. I believe it was summer of 20. Uh, the, the department decided ultimately to, uh, let me back up. Out of those, those petitions were ultimately both wrapped into a proposed arm in front of the commission. The commission uh, through its process uh, and the arm rule process uh, came to adopt elements of those two petitions in the current arm rule that we're discussing here today. That final adoption taking place in December, 2020. That's a really coarse scale abbreviated summary of the tail end of a longer process. I'd look first to the legal, add any significant pieces or correct any pieces that I didn't capture well there. And, uh, and then would, would stand to hear uh, further clarification from the commission, Chair Robinson. Okay, Becky, would you like to add to that? Yes, thank you, Chair Robinson. Commissioner Bayor, um, and, and I didn't hear you wanting to go as far back as a negotiated rulemaking committee that was put together as well that attempted to come to some agreement on the Madison River, but that's also a, a real uh, far back piece of the history of this Madison River. But to Quentin's point about the two petitions that came into the uh, Madison River Recreation Plan that is now adopted, well, was adopted in December of 2020 on the Madison River. In that adoption, the commission opted to overrule with its adoption all the previous regulations in place. And so January 1 of 2022, if this commission doesn't readopt something else, the previous regulations are no longer in place and the new administrative rule would go into effect. And so one of your options here today is to amend the uh, administrative rule to include a walkway section. The other option is to repeal it altogether and you would have no walkway sections on the Madison River. And the other option is like I mentioned to allow the walkway section to go in effect January 1st of 2022. 
So the history of this is that the regulations were um, were repeal, will repeal. And if you want to think of it in legislative terms, it's like a sunset. The, the regulations will sunset of January 1, 2022, unless something else is adopted in their place, uh, unless there's another, and unless there's another option that you would rather choose as commission. Does that answer your question, Commissioner Byworth, Chair Robinson? Yes, thank you. Any, anyone else? Commissioner Waller? <clears throat> um, quick question, um, Chairman Robinson. Um, I wasn't really involved because I'm, I'm new to this commission in the earlier uh, months of this year. Could you just explain to me really quick who was put on the Madison River Walk group panel? Like who does that consist of? And do you have a list of the, or Eric, either one? Or just a summary? Like, I, I guess here's my question. Uh, are there people on the group making these um, final assessments? Are, are they um, a mixed bag of people, if you will? Or I'm, I'm just wondering how they got chosen to be on the group. Sure. We went through quite a long process of uh, um, going back and forth and choosing carefully, trying to make it a diverse group. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't know if you, Quentin or Eric, if you have the list, just you could quickly just kind of list uh, who was chosen for the group. Yeah, while we, Chair Robinson, if I may, while we look for the list itself, the list of names, Jess, I wonder if you could reference the arm rule again and identify the perspectives oh, sure. that by arm rule language were required to be part of the selection process. Or Becky. I'm right. happy to. Go ahead. Well, oh, do you have that, Commissioner Walsh? I, I am. I'm happy that the work okay. group uh, was specified as uh, it's 12 members, three commercial outfitters with a Madison River special recreation use permit, then three non-commercial Madison River users, then two individuals with a Madison Valley business interest not connected to commercial outfitting, one member trained in natural resources management, not working uh, currently for the Department of Fish, Wildlife and Parks. One representative from Fish, Wildlife, uh, Fish and Wildlife Commission, which is me. Um, one at-large member whose selected qualities are largely outside the above descriptions for, other, for the other work group members. And then in addition to that, we've had staff from the um, Fish, Wildlife, and Parks Department in Eileen Rice. Uh, Dr. Rice has attended every meeting and uh, Don Scar. Do you have any other questions, Commissioner Waller? Uh, no, thank you very much. I appreciate that detail. Commissioner thank Siebel? Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to make a, a couple of points for clarity here that uh, reading the public comments, and I always want to thank the public for their input on this, there seemed to be some confusion, and I understand now where they came from with, with the idea that we may repeal entirely the walk wade sections. But I guess uh, when we voted on this to, to promote the repeal of, of both these arms, that was not, I, I don't believe, I'll say that I don't believe that was the understanding of the commission at the time. So I just want to clarify that with the public and, and depending on <laughs> prepared to make a motion here, if, if that's okay to, to, to keep the conversation going. Yes, I would entertain a motion, please. Madam Chair. I'm, I'm going to uh, going to move for option two uh, for the arm rule 6702, and I move the commission amend arm 12 11 6702 to incorporate in substitution the walkway sections from the outlet of Quake Lake to Lions Bridge and from Ennis Bridge to Ennis Lake as described in the 2021 fishing regulations. I'll Sir. second that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Walsh. Would you like to um, make a motion on the other one also, please? Madam Chair. I'm happy, I'm happy to do that. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner Walsh. I move the commission adopt repealing arm 12116706 as proposed eliminating rest rotation of commercial use on the Madison River. Second. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Siebel. Okay, are there any other questions or comments before I go?
go out to the public for oh, Commissioner Walsh. <clears throat> Chair Robinson, I'd just like to clarify that the um, Madison River Work Group is working well together. Our meetings are now live streamed and I encourage the public to uh, tune in and listen to those meetings. But we try to get an agenda out as early as possible. Um, my commitment and the commitment of the work group is to reduce traffic on the Madison River if at all possible. And, and we are going to uh, implement uh, caps as prescribed in the original arm language for the work group on commercial use. And as well, we are in the process of developing some control mechanisms for non-commercial use on the river. And I think everyone recognizes that um, the traffic on the Madison River is at record highs. And this is a, um, you know, Blue Ribbon, one of our finest fisheries in the state of Montana. It's a treasure. And, uh, and I think the commitment for the work group is to come up with solutions other than the ones that we're talking about this morning, the rest rotation and, um, and allowing boats to float from Reynolds Bridge to Lions Bridge and come up with alternatives that we believe will be more effective. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Tabor, did you have a comment or question? Yeah, good morning. I apologize for being late. I had some technology issues. Um, I just wanted to mention with regards to the formation of the work group that we actually followed the exact prescription outlined by the previous commission. So th that was something that uh, was actually put in an administrative rule, I believe, in December of 2020, if I'm correct. And so when we came together as a commission, a new commission, that was one of our very first orders of business was to put that group together based on the guidelines as, as put in by the previous commission. So that wasn't something that, you know, we pulled out of the air. That was something we were following a prescription on. Thank you for that clarification. Oh, you can take your hand down too, please. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Siebel. Madam Chair, just to follow up to what Commissioner Tabor said and what Commissioner Walsh said, that the, the process for the selection committee, I guess I feel very confident in the diversity and, and the, the fact that we're representing, you know, the, the stakeholders in the Madison, and we recognize how important this process is. So I just want to put a vote of encouragement in for that committee. I think it was it was thoughtfully put together, thoughtfully selected, and they've got their work cut out for them without a doubt going forward. And And, and I think this will probably be one of the least controversial decisions we'll have to discuss going forward. But I just want to have, I have ultimate confidence in them and their recommendation. And again, I just want to re reiterate to the public that what, what I've proposed, especially with 6702, is essentially a status quo when it comes to walkway. We're going to keep the same walkway sections as we've, we've had previously, and, and I believe for, for several years on the river. And then we're going to wait for more recommendations to come from that working group to, to really address the problem. So thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Byer. Thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, this is a cautionary note, and I've raised this a couple of times, but uh, in the process, there's there's two ways to approach things. And one is to go through the motions to uh, follow the guidelines. And the other is the outcome, the way it's actually portrayed. What I'm hearing from a lot of the public is they're not really clear on how these processes are working because they get muddled uh, in the processes of making motions, amending motions. So. Before we go to a vote or before we go to public comment, would you restate the motions or have uh, staff restate the motions so it's very clear what the public is commenting on? Sure. Because what I don't want to have to do is keep coming back to issues again and again because we messed it up in the last commission meeting. And, and I think it's really important that we not just go through the motions, but we do the process in a way that facilitates the public involvement. Thanks for your comment. And Commissioner Siebel, would you... Uh, Repeat your motion, please. Yes, Madam Chair. I moved that the commission amend ARM 12.11.6702 to incorporate in substitution the walk wade sections from the outlet of Quake Lake to Lions Bridge and from Ennis Bridge to Ennis Lake as described in the 2021 fishing regulations. Thank you. And Commissioner Walsh, would you repeat your motion, please? I move the commission adopt repealing arm 12116706 as proposed eliminating rest rotation of commercial use on the Madison River. 
OK, thank you. And I what I'm going to do today, um, everyone's comments, public comments will be limited to two minutes. And I'm taking a maximum of a half an hour of comments because there has been ample chances for public comment on this. And Commissioner Walsh, did you have another? I mean, Commissioner Bayer, did you have another comment? Oh, your hand's still up there. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I just wanted to make sure before I went out. Okay, um, do we have any public commenters? Madam Chair, uh, Quentin had his hand up. Oh, oh, go ahead. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Siebel. I just wanted to remind everybody again that we will be recording and, uh, and we'll have that alarm at the end of the recording uh, come across on the Zoom call. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Are there any public comments? It looks like somebody with the telephone number ending in 276, they are asking to talk. Okay. Okay, star six to unmute. There we go. Go ahead. Commissioner Robinson, Commissioner, my name is Mike Bias, IAS. I'm the executive director of the Fishing Outfitters Association of Montana. <clears throat> I'm also a member of the Madison Work Group and a past member of the Madison Negotiated Rulemaking Committee. I'm calling today on behalf of the Board of Directors and nearly 1,000 professional guide and outfitter members of the Fishing of Foam. And uh, I want to urge you to uh, and let you know that Foam fully supports that if Arm Rule 1211-6706, which is the rest and rotation section, is repealed, that the Commission should correspondingly repeal 1211-6702, which is the walkway section while maintaining the existing closure to fishing from vessels from Quake Lake to Lions Bridge and Ennis Bridge to Ennis Lake. Um, and uh, that's, that's it. I'm available for questions if needed, but uh, I encourage you to uh, vote on those motions as, as motion. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Do we have any other comments? Um. Yes, there's another one ending in 241. Okay. All right, star six to unmute. Okay, go ahead. Hello, my name is Steve Lubeck, and I'm representing the uh, George Grant chapter of Trout Unlimited, Skyline Sportsman Association, and Anaconda Sportsman, collectively known as the petitioners from 2000 that filed two petitions with the commission uh, to have the rules adopted that you were proposing to repeal today. Um, what I haven't heard today in the discussion among the commission and staff is any summary of the public comment on this issue. And uh, I think it's important based on what I've read on the commission website to recognize that uh, there were 93% of the public that commented on this uh, are opposing the exact action that you have uh, made a motion to go forward with on rest rotation. 200 people opposed repeal, 15 supported it. That's like plus three on your advisory committee. 12 people plus three others, 15, 93%. 63% of them, uh, the commenters, oppose uh, the repeal of walkway, yet you have proposed a motion to go forward with this. So I guess I find this a little bit disconcerting that in light of overwhelming public uh, comment, you're gonna move forward with this action regardless. Doesn't seem to be you are acting in the public interest. And work group may have made an advisory, but I will remind you that you are the governing body here, not the work group. It's you, uh, the commissioners that have the authority to do as you think is in the public interest. And I think the public comment speaks for itself in this case. And if you go forward with this, this is a sad day for Fish, Wildlife and Parks. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other further commenters? Um, yes, there are two more beyond. So there's a number ending in 276. Okay, star six to unmute, um, caller 276. Star, is the star on your phone in six? 
There you go. Go ahead. Uh, Commissioner, that was me. This is Mike Bias. Uh, somehow I was entered twice. Oh, Sorry OK. About Sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, next caller then, Pat. Um, four, seven, seven. Okay, star six, caller four, seven, seven. Star, yeah. yep, go ahead. Thank you. Um, my name is Hugh Zackheim, and I've been participating in the issue of walkway designation uh, of the Quake to Lions Ridge section of the Upper Madison. Um, I've presented my comments in support of keeping this section as walkway at a number of the opportunities that uh, Commissioner Walsh noted that we've had, including the December 15th public hearing on the arm rule repeal. I want to thank the Commission and the Madison River Work Group for addressing this matter in an extremely timely fashion. I did read all the 150 comments provided by the department in the materials published online for this meeting. There have been many thoughtful comments submitted by people with many years of experience fishing and guiding this section from Reynolds to Lyons, um, where the arm rule of, applies. Um, and a consistent thread of those comments is that well over 90% of the written comments that were presented on the website indicated strong support for maintaining the status quo of no fishing from boats. Um, I note, too, that the file called Ma Madison River Comments by the Numbers does have a high number in terms of the walkway of people opposed to the, to the proposal to repeal. But I would note that as that issue came up and was commented on a letter from Anaconda Sportsman, Skyline Sportsman, and George Grant to you, that issue of walkway was characterized that the repeal of the arm rule would repeal walk wade and as it turned out technically that was correct so many of the comments that came in to the commission saying um i oppose repeal are basically opposing the elimination of walk wade very confusing i know you've been through it a lot so i just would say that it's a bit misleading in terms of walk wade saying that a lot of people um would like to get rid of walk wade because i found almost none in terms of the written comments that i wanted uh excuse me that i was able to review so again confusing um, i do appreciate the motion to adopt uh motion number two as commissioner siebel uh proposed in his motion it, it which time. would restore the status quo of walk wade. thank you thank you do we have any further callers not at this time okay I'll open it back up to the commission. Are there any comments or questions before we go to a vote? Oh, Madam Chair? Yep, Commissioner Byers. I just wanted to express the, uh, in either case, the intent of the previous commission was to provide an opportunity to test things. So it wasn't necessarily that this was supposed to be written in stone, but either way, I just encourage the, the staff to continue to monitor the effects of these regulations, whichever way they go. And so we can better understanding that the distribution of recreation. Uh, I'm not sure I've seen that come out of the rule, but I just wanna make sure that, that uh, this commission is committed to the follow-up that's required to ensure whether or not rest rotation is implemented or repealed, that the, the staff continues to monitor the effects of these different approaches uh, over time, which I believe was uh, very loud and clearly directed in the last uh, go round. Thank you. Commissioner Walsh. Uh, Madam Chair, I just wanted to comment that um, I personally take my commitment on the Madison River Work Group very seriously. And I think the overreaching goal here is to uh, reduce or at least cap the traffic on the Madison River. Um, my belief right now is that rest and rotation would increase traffic in certain sections while uh, limiting it in the, uh, in the section from Lyons below that was uh, prescribed by the prior commission. I don't think this action today eliminates the potential for implementing rest rotation, but I don't think we had a proposal where we were trading off the Reynolds uh, to Lyons section for Lyons and below 
uh, I don't think that was uh, the right solution. And my specific concern, which I've stated publicly, is that the uh, FAS site uh, at Reynolds Bridge is not appropriate for absorbing the traffic that would normally go uh, be launching from Reynolds on a weekend day, either for the public or commercial use. And then, I, I, you know, another thing I think that's sometimes lost in this dialogue is that um, commercial use is not just the guide. There are two members of the public fishing in most of those boats. Many of those people are resident anglers from the state of Montana. And so we're trying to do our best to accommodate um, resident and non-resident anglers. And this specific section from Reynolds and below uh, is one of the most highly trafficked sections of the river due to outfitter use from Idaho and West Yellowstone, as well as the normal traffic coming up from Ennis and Gallatin County. So with that, I, I uh, just want to reiterate and uh, assure Commissioner Byor that we are committed to um, coming up with solutions that'll be uh, hopefully uh, winning solutions and that the work group needs to get this accomplished by the 2023 uh, season. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments before we go to a vote? Uh, Commissioner Tabor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to reiterate that when we all first started on the commission and the Madison um, matter came up that one of the commitments that I, I know I've heard uh, Commissioner Walls, Co Commissioner Seabull, you, yourself, Madam Chair, is that we, we know that not just the Madison, but all the rivers throughout Montana are feeling different levels of stress. And so that it's really important when we do our work with this, this work committee and we look at solutions that we look for a fair and balanced solution across the board and not one small element of a constituency trying to get everything for themselves, but, but everybody uh, has to make a contribution. And there has been a history in particular on this river to be so focused on the commercial elements to not really take in totality the amount of use and quite often abuse by the non-commercial environment. And that happens on public land everywhere. And so if you're looking for a true uh, balanced approach, you have to look at all user groups and look at, a, look at it in totality instead of just carving out um, a section of it, which remarkably at times doesn't even represent the majority of the use, but is perceived to be the majority of the use. So, you know, for, for me as a commissioner, this is an important step of letting the work group do not a politically charged solution, but one that really looks at all user groups and looks for balance so that we can all get along and protect the resource instead of it just focusing completely on trying to limit the usage of just one uh, one set of users on, on the river. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. All right, I will call for a vote on the, uh, to repeal the Madison uh, River Parkways section. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna read the motion. The motion is to, for the commission to amend the arm 12.116702 to incorporate in substitution the walkway sections from the outlet of Quake Lake to Lions Bridge and from Ennis Bridge to Ennis Lake as described in the 2021 fishing regulations. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. The next motion, uh, the commission moved to the commission to adopt repealing arm 12.11.6706 as proposed, eliminating restoration of commercial use on the Madison River. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Opposed, aye. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, I'll, I will uh, have Quentin, if you would please speak to the next business on our agenda, please. Chair Robinson, members of the commission and Director Worsak, thank you. Yeah, last topic is uh, titled Big Hole River Brown Trout Fishing Regulations. More specific, <coughs> if you look through the cover sheet, 
it speaks to the potential for the commission to adjust dates on a stretch of the Big Hole River that the commission acted upon earlier this fall with respect to brown trout regulations, adjusting the dates and means of take. Uh, this this uh, topic is again, specific to the potential for adjusting the starting and or stopping dates uh, of those brown trout regulations on the section of river from BLM Maiden Rock to Browns Bridge FAS. Uh, and I say that again, uh, I say, I say, I, I mentioned those details because again, uh, this is a final, it uh, one stop visit to the commission on this, the, these details it does warrant com public comment from the podium here today. Uh, but in the same vein, the commission sheet is fair, the commission cover sheet is fair, is narrow relative to the decision space uh, that, the, that the commission has on the table here today um, with respect to, uh, again, any formal de decision they make. With that, Chair Robinson will stand for any questions, and Eric Roberts is also from Fisheries is also available for questions. Okay, thank you, Commissioners. Any questions or comments? Madam Chair. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead, Commissioner Walsh. I just had a question, and that's uh, for the staff. Is uh, Jim Olson on on this call? Sure. Chair Robinson, Commissioner Walsh, I don't believe Jim is. We do have Eric Roberts um, with Fisheries Division Chief of, uh, of Operations here. It would be great Eric? to get a comment from your staff on this. Eric is available if you want to frame a question or, or if, you, if just generally, um, if that is your question, Commissioner Walsh. I guess the quote, the Twofold, thank you. The, I guess the question is, does the local biologist support this change? And the change proposed here is to shift things forward a month so that the fishing would close on October 1 and uh, reopen on April 1st in this specific section, Maiden Rock and Browns. Eric? Yeah, Matt, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Commissioner Walsh, Eric Roberts, Fisheries Management Bureau Chief out of Helena. Um, Commissioner Walsh, uh, the, the biologist does support sh the shift, as you say. Um, there's two pieces of this. The, the spring opener part of it uh, was something shifting it to April 1st. This isn't something that's really highly controversial, so to speak. Uh, most people that do fish the river recognize that with the higher flows and the temperatures of the season, um, shifting the opening date of fishing to from the third Saturday of May to April 1st really doesn't have much uh, biological consequence to it. Uh, however, it's the other end of the season, the closure. Um, by closing the fishing on that section from at, on September 30th rather than October 31st, uh, that, that provides uh, a protection or it, it, it reduces a stressor during the peak spawning season for brown trout, uh, especially in this section of the big hole that we're talking about. Thank you. Commissioner Byer, did you have a question? Did, uh, I had a very similar question to Commissioner Walsh's, but uh, I guess what I'm worried about is shifting it back to April 1st is we're just pushing them right into smack into the time when brown trout, you know, after coming out of the hard winter are starting to feed heavily and they're not in very good shape. And we also have the rainbow trout spawning right at that time. So are we just shifting pressure onto the spawners and the post, post winter brown trout uh, in a way to accommodate more opportunity. And I'm not sure that biologically that's warranted. I, I guess on the October 1st, I have to trust the field. And if the local biologist says October 1st is the day we need, I'm in full support. I am very uncomfortable though, shifting the, the opener back to April 1st because of the other consequences that go with it. We may get high water. We may not get high water. It might not be fishable. Sometimes it's iced up well into early May. So, um, it may be a moderate influence, uh, but uh, I think there's still an influence there. And I'd, I'd be happy to hear from Eric if I'm just uh, off base. Eric, if you would like to uh, speak to that, please. Yeah, Madam Chair, Commissioner Byworth, the, the, everything you state there it certainly is, is a possibility, um, but just weighing out risk factors and 
and balancing out the, the opportunity. And a lot of the discussions that occurred last summer um, with the public and with um, many of the users through, we did, we did convene a work group of all of, of a lot of the, the people that do fish on the big hole. Um, there was a quite a bit of discussion about when it could open in the spring and it, it was generally agreed upon that, that April 1st, for the reasons like you say, Commissioner Byworth, that, that it's typically the flows are high or a lot of times it's still iced up. It's not as accessible. Uh, and just the amount, the volume of angling uh, at that time of year is also lower. Um, and, and so largely our staff, FWP staff, was comfortable uh, with that April 1st, uh, opening the season on April 1st. Okay. Are there any further questions? Madam Chair, a quick Commissioner follow up, Yes. So again, Eric, the work group actually didn't come to a resolution on that. Uh, on the earlier start date in the spring, there was no resolution on it. Yeah, Madam Chair, Commissioner, yeah, they're, they're really, that, that work group uh, had a lot of different options and looked at a lot of different options for a lot of different rivers. And so you are correct in that it never did go around the table and, and say, does, does every member of the work group agree to this or to agree to the, these dates? It was just more of capturing the general discussion um, when that work group met, uh, because there were a lot of different options on a lot of different rivers that that, that, that work group entertained at, at one meeting. Madam Chair. Yeah, one more follow-up, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so that's uh, kind of the my essential concern with this is that I don't think the, the proposal to move back to April 1st has been vetted or fully uh, put before the public uh, for comment. And if the work group on the, you know, the spawn enclosure brown trout work group didn't come up with a, a recommendation and we haven't had that out before the public, I know we received quite a few comments uh, recently, but uh, I don't think that's been fully vetted. And I want to reiterate my concern earlier that when we go through these motions and we, we think through them and we listen to public comment, reversing them a month later based on uh, some scant public comment isn't a, always a good move. And I'm a little concerned with this one uh, to that end. All right, thank you. Commissioner Tabor. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So um, I, I wanna go back to, to actually what happened because I recall the, the sequence of events when we made the motion and um, there was a little bit of last minute confusion right before the meeting, as I recall. And the reason that this section of the river got applied on Big Hole was because it was more focused on the beaver head. You may recall we were looking at them at the two rivers as a package deal. And so there was more focus on that spring uh, treatment in the in really on the beaver head more so than on the Big Hole. And um, Quite frankly, it was just kind of a miscommunication because I remember back then the, the department was comfortable with the April 1st date. And um, I, I want to say that I actually made the motion um, that did it before. And it's because I read it off my notes and quite frankly got confused. So I feel the vetting did occur. We did the entire process. It was just that the two rivers got lumped together. And inadvertently, the big hole got subject to that extra 30 days, which created a, an unnecessary penalty and didn't really accomplish anything biologically, especially based on what the, the local um, folks said. And so we're just we're making this correction so that it, that it creates, uh, you know, a good opportunity for, for folks there, but also is mindful of what we, why we did it in the first place, which was to protect the, uh, the trout. Commissioner Byers. Uh, Madam Chair, I think it's just useful. Uh, thanks, uh, Vice Chair Tabor, for raising it. We are under a petition for rulemaking to address the beaver head, and I believe that will be in 60 days or something to that effect. So we're going to revisit this, this question again on the beaver head. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner Siebel? Madam Chair, I guess just in general, uh, reading this, reading some of the public comments we got on this, the uh, I generally support the idea of the earlier opening. If we're going to take a month off the end of the season, I like the idea of, of giving the opportunity to fish if the opportunity exists. 
uh, with the flow rates and the weather to, to start it earlier. It seems like a, a good trade off to me in, in the balance of reading through the comments. Uh, the, the, the balance of, of access and opportunity is good. And if you were, uh, if you were willing, I'd be, I'd be willing to, to make a motion. Sure. Go ahead. I move the commission allow fishing on the Big Hole River from BLM Maiden Rock to Browns Bridge fishing access site from April 1st through September 30th, effective March 1, 2022. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you. All right, any further comments or questions from the commission before we go out to public comment? Okay. All right, do we hope oh, Commissioner? I have one, yep, yes, sorry. Um, we also received feedback uh, concerning the section from Dickey Bridge to Jerry Creek access site. Um, and I just wanted uh, those folks to know who made the comments that we should adopt these same rules for that section that uh, we have not had an opportunity to put that up for public comment and that the commission will be taking a good look at that in a future meeting. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Okay, All right. do we have any public commenters? It looks like uh, area code 307, last three is 298. Okay. Um, star six to unmute. Okay, go ahead. Hi there. Good morning, uh, Commissioners, Madam Chair, for the record, Clayton Elliott, E-L-L-I-O-T-T, -T, representing Montana Trout Unlimited. Thank you for the opportunity to comment this morning. Um, appreciate the discussion of all the commissioners on this. Um, first and foremost, I think one suggestion I would have on this topic is that this really should be, I mean, we just went through the season setting on big game, and I think that prov provides an instructive approach here to go out with a tentative regulation here and allow pub the public to comment on a specific proposed item. I, I'm generally in support, but I just want to say that I think we got into this sort of issue of having to come back to this because at the last meeting when we adopted these, we didn't go through a tentative with a with a comment period before the next meeting to adopt the final. And I think that might be why we're in a bit of a situation where we're here. That being said, um, we are here and this is on the table and I just wanted to offer uh, MTU support for the, the October closure. I think the local biologists and the science certainly supports the need to close the river um, in October. If our end goal is to protect spawning brown trout, that is a critical month that uh, the science suggests is important. So I appreciate that in the motion. And we certainly are open to the idea and think that it, in exchange for that, um, more important closure date in October that, that moving it up a month into April is a is a decent compromise for that. Uh, we would start, uh, we would like to see this start, this regime start in the fall of 2022. I understand that's not in the motion right now, but that really gives us a chance to look at this setting or this season where we did have basically a functional closure of that section of river because of the drought management plan. Um, and then also look in, into that, the existing closure. So we would support fall 2022. I know that's not in the, in the motion, but I just wanted to offer that. Again, appreciate the motion. I think October, yes, I will wrap up just quickly. Um, uh, and again, just would reiterate not to rush and that we should think about doing this as a tentative today. Uh, thank with you. that, thank you, Madam Chair. Do we have any other further comments? Um, there's a... 276. Okay. Okay. Star six to unmute, please. Go ahead. Commissioners, my name is Mike Bias, B I A S, I'm Executive Director for Fishing Outfitters Association of Montana. Um, we were also in attendance at the Brown Trout, we called the Brown Trout Focus Group, which, which met in the fall, early fall. And uh, we also went through all the public hearings regarding the brown trout issue through the summer. Um, Commissioner Byork was right in that uh, we were discussing quite a bit uh, spring closures and um, fall closures and, and the dates and, and 
and batting them around. All of these were discussed. All the date options were discussed at the focus group meeting. Um, and uh, Commissioner Tabor is also correct in that um, we had um, discussions with, with issues on the Beaverhead River as well, which closes um, the third Saturday in May or opens the third Saturday in May. And so um, what, what the brown trout focus group was looking at was the, the brown trout model that showed probably it was juvenile brown trout survivorship that was the issue. And uh, what the focus group was looking at <clears throat> to protect, which is why we did the, the October 31st closure on the big hole. And correspondingly, because of the study design, how the study design was set up to look at brown trout issues on the beaver head and the big hole, the, um, we instituted or we looked at the uh, the closures or the openers for uh, the Beaverhead River and just presumed that, oh, uh, let's just do that on the big hole. But um, my comment, I guess, is that FOAM supports the uh, the closure and opening dates as motion the September 30th to April 1st based on discussions with local biologists and fish, wildlife, and parks that um, these changes won't affect either study design or comparisons across the rivers and uh, protection, adequate protections for the juvenile brown trout. And then in addition, um, with the earlier time. closure protection okay. of adult spawning browns as well. So Okay. Thank you um, for your comments. The days. Thank you. Do we have further callers? Um, Paul Sidaway. Okay. Okay, star six to unmute. Eric, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, great. Uh, Madam Chairman, Commissioners, Paul Sidaway, Butte and Melrose. Um, I'm here to uh, represent the brown trout on the big hole. Um, George Grant, who many of you know of, said that the big hole was a brown trout made in heaven. And I absolutely agree with that. And also the fact that the brown trout population has taken a catastrophic drop in the last six years. And this is a perfect opportunity for us to practice this idea of protecting the resource. And the original um, discussions that occurred at the focus groups were absolutely in favor of spawning closures. And I do think there was a bit of miscommunication that originally there was two sections of the river that we really needed to focus on in order to make a difference. And right now BLM to um, Maiden Rock to Browns Bridge is, is one of the two uh, areas where the highest number of spawning beds are. The other would be Jerry Creek or um, Dickey Bridge to Jerry Creek. And so um, based on all the public comment that was also discussed at the focus groups, which was a unanimously in favor of spawning closures on the river, I, th I think it's been shortchanged by just having BLM Maiden Rock to Browns Bridge, we need to include another section of the river, which would still leave plenty of opportunity um, during that time of the year. And the absolute October 1st to April 1st is, is for sure the favored time frame for closure. Um, we have to always remember the fish in the river are a gift and they needed to be treated accordingly. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Are there any further callers? Not that I see. Okay. Commission, anyone have any further comments or questions? Uh, Commissioner Walsh. Madam Chair, I had one question and that is uh, related to uh, Clayton Elliott's comment that this would not be effective for fall of 22, but the my understanding from the motion is it'll be effective March 1, 2022. So Clint, maybe you can help clarify that. Or, or Becky. Or Becky. 
Chair Robinson, Commissioner Walsh, I'll take a first stab and certainly leave room for Becky. I see Eric has also uh, opened up his camera, but you are correct. As the motion reads, the last, the last of the motion sentence is effective March 1, 2022. Uh, okay. Thank you. I, I wonder, because he said that we just did the, um, set the, the dates and I wonder, because we can, we can adjust. And so like this, this is an adjustment of what, what was done. And I wonder if that's where the comment came from. Becky, would you mind uh, speaking to that? Yes, thank you, Chair Robinson. It is true that uh, the commission has the authority to change its regulations at any time, as long as the requirements for notice and public comment are satisfied. And that's what we are, of course, here doing today. So okay. the, the date is changed uh, lawfully and can override the what you've what you've passed in the in what you have passed in the past. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Okay. All right. All those in favor of the motion to allow fishing on the Big Hole River from BLM Maiden Rock to Browns Bridge uh, fishing access site from April 1st through September 30th, effective March 1st, 2022, signify by saying aye, please. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, thank you. All right, that uh, concludes what we have on the agenda. I will open it up for public comment for issues that are not on the agenda. Do we have any callers who would like to speak? Nobody's showing up right now. Okay, thank you. All right, well, I want to thank everyone for coming on this morning. Please stay warm and uh, stay safe. Madam Chair, before yes, we, before we uh, are dismissed, I, I just like to uh, thank Shauna Pieski for all her great work. She's, uh, I think she retired as of today, but it was been, a, it, it's been great working with her and I really appreciate all her hard work behind the scenes and sometimes late hours and early mornings trying to keep us all uh, headed in the right direction. So Shauna, thank you. Uh, hope you had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Commissioner Boyer. Thank you, Shauna. Yeah, thanks, Shauna. Yes, thank you, Shauna. <clears throat> okay, I think we are adjourned. Thank you all. Happy New Year, everyone. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. Thank you.